Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Chapter 1. It is a truth universal and knowledge that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in one of a wife. However, little known the feelings of use of such a man may be on his first entry in a neighborhood, this truth is so well fixed in the minds of surrounding families that he is considered a rightful property of someone of, of their daughters. My dear Mr. Bennett sent his letter to him one day. Had you heard that Nuckville Park is lit at last? Mr. Bennett replied that he had not. But it is Chief of Mrs. Long had just been here and she told me all about it. Mr. Bennett made no answer. Do we not want to know he's taking it? Do I have impatiently? You want to tell me and I have no objection to hearing it. This was an invitation enough. Wow, my dear, you must know Mrs. Long says that another field taken by a young man of large fortune from the north of England. Daddy came down on Monday on a chasing for the Cedar Place and was so much delighted with it that he agreed with Mr. Morris immediately. Dad, he's to take position before Mitch Elmis and some of all his servants are to be in the house by the end of next week. What is his name? <laughs> is he married or single? Mm -hmm. Single, my dear. To be sure, a single man of large fortune for 5000 a year. What a fine thing for our girls. How so? How can it affect them? My dear Mr. Bennett replied his wife. How can you be so tiresome? You must know that I'm thinking of his marrying one of them. His dad is dizzy and settling. Dizzy? Now, so how can you talk so? But it is very likely that he may fall in one of them. Now, for you must visit him as soon as he comes. I see no occasion for that. You and the girls may go. You may send them by themselves, which phrase will be still better for as you as handsome as any of them. Mr. Bing may like you the best of the party. My dear, you flatter me. I certainly have had my shell of beaver, but I do not pretend to be anything sure no not. When a woman has five grown up daughters, she had to give up thinking of her own beauty. In such cases, there's not often much beauty to think of. But, my dear, you must indeed go and see Mr. Bingley when he comes into the neighborhood. It is more than I engaged for, I assure you. But consider your dogs us. I only think what establishment it would be for one of them. So William and Lady Lucas are determined to go marry on that account for in general, you know, they visit no newcomers. Indeed, you must go for it. It would be impossible for us to visit if you do not. You over scrupulous, surely. I dare say Mr. Bingham would be very glad to see you. And I will send a few lines by you to assure him of my heart to consent his marrying whichever he chooses the girls, though I must throw in a good word for my little Lizzie. I dare say you would do no such thing. Lizzie's not a bit better than the others, and I'm sure she is not half so handsome as you know, so good. Who more this lady? But you always giving her the preference. They have none of the much to recommend and reply. He, they are all silly and ignorant. Other girls believe he has something more acquaintance than her sisters. Mr. Bennett, how can you abuse your own children in such a way? You take a light in vexing me. You have no compassion for my poor nerve. You mistake me, my dear. I have a high respect for your nerves. They're my old friends. I have heard you mention them with consideration these last 20 years at least. Uh, you do not know what I suffer. But I hope you will get over it and live to see a young man of a thousand who come into the neighborhood. It will be no use to us if 26 should come since you will not visit them. Depend upon them, my dear, that when they are 20, I will leave them all. Mr. Bennett was so out of mixture of quick part, sarcastic, you know, reserved, go priest. That the experience of three and 20 years had been sufficient to make his wife understand his character. Her mind was less difficult to develop. She was a woman that may understand a little information and a certain time, but when she was discontented, she fancied herself nervous. The business of her life was to get her daughters married. His silence was visiting news.